Well, hi guys. Bruce here. Well, I messed up on the last video that was just released. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, I, on the routing of the belt on my deck for the LX-178, I, uh, I routed it incorrectly. It still works, but the front spindle uh, only has about a quarter of the belt on it. So whoever th commented on that video, there were four or five. Uh, thank you for letting me know, and I'm just—I might have to delete that video, insert this piece of video into the uh, uh, edited video, and then re-release it. I don't know, <laughs> but I'm filming this just in case, right? So let's get on. Let's get down there. Let's get down. That's something. The this is a 1996, and it's still an 18 millimeter to get these blades off of here. Wow. I gotta be careful because this thing's just dangling in the middle of no wires. Okay, there you go. Blades off. The same for all three. No, we're gonna do maintenance on the blades. I don't have tractors anymore, guys. This is the uh, famous 44 inch Piranha Deck by John Deere. Some guys hate them, some guys love them. I actually am, I actually quite like it. It, it really chops the grass up fine so the mulch is hardly visible. When I mulch with a regular lawnmower, I get tracks and trails. Although, with this one, this last little while, I've been getting a rooster tail off of one of these. Uh, paths here or here or here uh, partly because I had so much broccoli built up in here that's only a year's worth right I mean look at some of this stuff right I could sell it but uh, I'm gonna clean this up turn it over check the bearings on all the spindles mount my blades and then reconnect the deck I don't know what I'm going to do in the next 15 minutes. Joke! Yes, folks, I'm using the grass buster. I've seen guys use old putty knives that have been rounded off. And, but this is an actual tool designed for this exact purpose. Crazy, eh? Watch this. This is, this is exactly where it shines. I don't care. I'll just pick you up once. I don't like moving you around too much. But right there, I mean, that is exactly what this is for. Look at that. Now, we'll give you about a minute or so of this. Not too much. Okay, it may not look beautiful to you, but it looks beautiful to me. Now I've put these bolts in just three or four threads to keep these caps on. And believe it or not, it's a 27 year old John Deere deck and these caps are still here. <clears throat> so now, this is what I built this table for. You'll see that my cart lines up perfectly in height with my little table. And I'm gonna just turn this, I'm gonna turn this up and over onto here so that I can check the bearings in the spindles and everything. I mean, I might as well do this right while I got it apart, eh? This should be scary slash interesting, right? But it's not gonna roll on the wheels because they're over here. So I want this to grab onto here and we'll see how it goes. moving much. Pretty good for a, a guy who's not 25, eh? Ta -da! All right, I just gave it a quick wipe down with mineral spirits, not gas. So 
this is the first time I've had these covers off for the for the uh, spindles. And they were put on by a farmer. Oh. Okay, we're going to have to step it up to a baby snake. This is what I call a baby snake. And a disposable craftsman ratchet. New one. There we go. Good. No surprises. Let's do the other one. Wrong tool. Whew. Okay, so just a little bit of crud, not bad. No more dilly-dallying around, you guys. Now the book says to take the big belt off and check for slack on the spindles, etc. So now, I would assume to take slack off, this has got to go that way, right? Yep. Do I take the spring off? I got a spring remover. I got this idea from Zippo Varga. It's not exactly like his, because this is just a piece of hunk of metal with a hook on it and some wire. But watch this to get that spring out. Right. Two ways to do this. This way and the finger pinching way. Watch out. Isn't that a beautiful thing? It's all we need to do. And there's no cracks in that belt. So now, fingers crossed guys. Perfect. We'll grease that one. It's making a tiny bit of noise. I got a grease needle for that. Nothing. Perfect. I don't know if this has the grease on it or not. But it's good, I'm going to leave it. Okay, I'll be right back. Alright. On some decks, all you're doing is greasing the cavity between the bearings. And on this one, I don't know. So I'm going to give it... about four or five good ones. See if she's tickling. I'll give her four. Good. I 
I think it's actually getting looser. Let's move on to the next one. And so on and so on. This one has a little bit more noise, but there's no slack in the bearing. I'll give her a four shot. Here are two more. I'm not spending $110 on a spindle for that tiny bit of noise. I think close would. He does everything perfectly. Hobby motor. His, his videos are in Danish, but he is a really interesting guy. Okay. No slack. It might even be the, uh, just the cup on the bottom. Anyway, I'm not worried about it much. So you guys get the picture. I'll come back when it gets a, when something changes. All right, all things spindles are greased. This is an idler. It has a little bearing in it. I've got a I've got a grease needle here. I'm gonna just try and get a little bit of grease into that. Halfway there. You have to have this thing lined up just right or it leaks. Good. lined up just right you can put grease into just about any kind of a gap grease needle is what this is okay lift this up Point this right at the groove. Put your finger over it for an added seal. Because it's just a bearing. That's a carriage bolt. Let's go find it. Good. It's sticking right up. Okay. See how good I am here. Good. 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 Is that a 13? Yes, it is. Now there's one left. And I might not do anything with that one. There isn't any slack in it. I think we're ready to go back together. Yeah! That was a $500 yay. What do I do with that icky poo poo thing? One more rag is what I need. Good. 
spring. Nope, get the belts on first. I'm not going to do this guy because he's the quietest one of all and the hardest amount to do. Something's not right. There we go. Oop. You don't want to get grease on the pulley or your belt. Let's wipe that with a little cleaner rag. That was kind of cool, eh? Well, hi guys. Bruce here. Well, I messed up on the last video that was just released. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, I, on the routing of the belt on my deck for the LX-178, I, uh, I routed it incorrectly. It still works, but the front spindle uh, only has about a quarter of the belt on it. So wh whoever th commented on that video, there were four or five, uh, thank you for letting me know, and I'm just, I might have to delete that video, insert this piece of video into the uh, uh, edited video, and then re-release it. I don't know. <laughs> but I'm filming this just in case, right? So let's get on, let's get down there, let's get down. Oh, where are we? I guess I should go, to see if I can explain it from this side, maybe. Oh yeah, my light's down here. So this, this belt right here should actually be behind this idler and then that belt that comes off the idler should shoot straight across to I don't know if I can point it out to that one so you'll, you'll I'm going to go to the other side and show you we have a lot of smoke in the air still and I hear it's been invading our American neighbors Okay, so here we are. This, you see this belt, this spindle here only has about four inches of belt on it. So I'm going to undo this spring, take the belt off the back idler, and we'll see what we end up with. I don't know how much of this I can show you. But I can get my super spring tool on the other end of this spring right here, back over there. I'm definitely not going to take the deck off for this. You might be able to watch from here. Okay, <clears throat> this is not that hard a spring to move. There it is, see that? I'm just going to leave that connected too. Okay, the belt should be loose now. Is Siri Bob. So I take it off the idler. So I'm going to have to do this one blind over here. Damn. Okay. I had to just line that the uh, deck belt over the the left spindle. Just got to get that spring back on the hood decker. have to get the wire off now. I think it's going to come. Uh oh. Yep, we're good. Now let's see if we can rotate that bad boy and then I'll show you what I'm up to. Everything's turning. You bet. So I think I can show you better from the other side. Okay. So now, this front pulley, whoop, you need some light, I guess, eh? This front pulley, the belt now goes around the back of this one, and then back over there, off, the, off this spindle here, it shoots straight across to the spring idler. So now this front spindle is covered by at least half the belt. 
before it was coming off about here over to the spindle too. Cool, eh? I hope I explained that okay. Let me just set you back up again, and I'll talk at you. Hey, we're back. Hey, we're back! So, such a small thing, right? It was working. The belt was tight. It was it was following the right tension, but uh, it wasn't going halfway around that front spindle. So, thanks. I'll, I might just give it a super test in just one second here. Well, I'm, I'm going to triple check my work. Thank you, Dave. So here's the part of the video where the belt goes halfway around the front spindle. Now I'll move it forward. And now you can see the belt only goes around about a, a quarter of the... So I fixed it back to there. And I loosened the spring with my spring loosener upper tool there. So now this idler is also involved a little bit more. Oop. So it's back like that. Thanks guys. So I'm not quite sure how I'm going to handle this. Bye. Quick note, the uh, what do they call those? They're not to guide, they're a height, to, they're a height protector. Uh, they're supposed to be about that higher than the deck, but when you hit a bump, they take the bump instead of hitting the deck. So anyway, I, I put the front one on the back and the back one on the front, because this one, the back ones take the beating, and this one will last a bit longer being on the front, and I did the same on the other side. Okay, I have the belt around the clutch. That took two minutes, not even. I had not tightened it up yet because I still want to see if I can connect this bar to that hook. Oh, it's close. I might be able to do it. I might be able to do it. There might be some swing back and forth this way and that way. One more thing. We're just tightening up the belt. There. I'm just going to have to do a visual and then we can give it a go. Tune up comes tomorrow or whatever. Ah, something's not happy. Look at that, it didn't catch down there. Hello. So, what you saw was right. I might have that. That, that bar, which is this connection right here, I might have that a half a turn too tight, but now we're going to level the deck and find out. We're going to look in the manual, because John Deere is different than some of the other decks as to which is low at the front and which is not. So, eight and a half pounds in the back, ten in the front. That's perfect. I know that's a little high uh, in the back. But as long as you keep it sane, and then you can level your deck, right? Now that front looks a little bit low. So I'm just going to do some reading and come back. Yes, my friends, I got it together. It was these adjustments here. I've got the, uh, I've got the front, uh, oh, I don't know, an eighth of an inch lower than the back at ride, at lowered deck height. And uh, I just went out and chopped some of the neighbor's weeds down down there just to see and everything's fine. So there's always a few adjustments that you don't expect right when you're doing like I don't have the information and there's not a lot of YouTubes on the LX178s. All right, this is how to check the transmission fluid. It's not as bad as you'd think. Okay, this seat goes down like this, and these little bolts, they're almost like a handle from a, ha uh, a handle off of a lawnmower handle. One comes off of here, one comes off of here, and you just lift this up, 
Now, the, the guy I got this from is like six foot six, and here I am, very similar height, not. Now we're going to check the uh, transmission fluid, right? Now, about two years ago, I had this thing hanging from that chain hoist, and I, I did the blades back then because it was developing a rooster tail. So anyway, I did a little bit of oil leaked out of here, so I better just check it now. It, believe it or not, it takes 1030. There's a foam, a foam activated thing on the jig, and hopefully your battery is hanging in there for this. Good. So it's got that much oil. Let's say it's good. I'm just going to do a no-no and clean this. There's also a sight glass back here. Right. Uh, where is it? Come on, Bruce. Down that far. Dang it. There's the sight glass. I'm just going to spray onto that. Maybe make it a little easier to read. Right there. And I think it's good. Can you guys see the level of the oil in there? I can't. I think it's about an eighth of an inch below full. And that's about how much drained out. Sorry for the extremely shaky operation there. All this has gone by. I'm going to adjust the seat. Good. And I think I'm going to move the seat up a skosh. I think that'll do it. Because I've got a hunch Mrs. P is going to be doing a little bit more of this in the future. Well, I can adjust this anytime, right? Come on. <laughs> yeah, that's why I usually start with something simple in the mornings. There, is that square? Yes. There we go. Thank you very much for watching. All right, you guys. I got the deck on. I got it greased. The uh, I know there's some guys that don't like this, but I've got the uh, poor man's power steering on there, and they just float. Now, I realize there's no weight on there. I've got it all greased up. The deck's greased. The, the frame is greased. And uh, I'm going to lower it down and then just blow some feathers out from underneath and then give it a little wipe down. Okay, so now this should go up and down. And I'm going to lower that deck down so I can just finish blowing out the feathers from underneath. Like just it is is it's just dried broccoli that's hanging on to the hydro and I don't want it to overheat or I'm just being a fussy bugger eh? and then I'm gonna just give her a little wipe down well that's the crap I got from out, out from underneath it just with the uh, with the air hose and one minute I just wiped it down with uh, a little bit of alcohol and uh, 
I think it's ready to go. I might wax it. I don't know. But I guess it's time for a demo, eh? Gonna spread some fluff a little bit, eh? It's a miracle. So thanks for watching this one with me, guys.